Item number SCP-096 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-096 is to be contained in a cell, a 5m x 5m x 5m airtight steel cube at all times. Weekly checks for any cracks or holes are mandatory. There are to be absolutely no video surveillance or optical tools of any kind inside SCP-096's cell. Security personnel will use pre-installed pressure sensors and laser detectors to ensure SCP-096's presence inside the cell. Any and all photos, videos, or recordings of SCP-096's likeness are strictly forbidden without approval from Dr. and O5. Description. SCP-096 is a humanoid creature measuring approximately 2.38 meters in height. Subject shows very little muscle mass, with preliminary analysis of body mass suggesting mild malnutrition. Arms are grossly out of proportion with the rest of the subject's body, with an approximate length of 1.5 meters each. Skin is mostly devoid of pigmentation, with no sign of any body hair. SCP-096's jaw can open to four times the norm of an average human. Other facial features remain similar to an average human, with the exception of the eyes, which are also devoid of pigmentation. It is not yet known whether SCP-096 is blind or not. It shows no signs of any higher brain functions, and is not considered to be sapient. SCP-096 is normally extremely docile, with pressure sensors inside its cell indicating it spends most of the day pacing by the eastern wall. However, when someone views SCP-096's face, whether it be directly, via video recording, or even a photograph, it will enter a stage of considerable emotional distress. SCP-096 will cover its face with its hands and begin screaming, crying, and babbling incoherently. Approximately one to two minutes after the first viewing, SCP-096 will begin running to the person who viewed its face, who will from this point on be referred to as SCP-096-1. Documented speeds have varied from 35 km per hour to km per hour and seems to depend on distance from SCP-096-1. At this point, no known material or method can impede SCP-096's progress. The actual position of SCP-096-1 does not seem to affect SCP-096's response. It seems to have an innate sense of SCP-096-1's location. Note, this reaction does not occur when viewing artistic depictions. See Document 096-1. Upon arriving at SCP-096-1's location, SCP-096 will proceed to kill and SCP-096-1. 100% of cases have left no traces of SCP-096-1. SCP-096 will then sit down for several minutes before regaining its composure and becoming docile once again. It will then attempt to make its way back to its natural habitat. Due to the possibility of a mass chain reaction, including breach of Foundation secrecy and large civilian loss of life, retrieval of subjects should be considered Alpha Priority. Doctor has also petitioned for immediate termination of SCP-096. See Interview 096-1. Termination order has been approved and is to be carried out by Dr. On See Incident 096-1-A. Audio log from Interview 096-1. Interviewer Dr. Interviewed Retired Captain Former Commander of Retrieval Team Zulu 9-A, Retrieval Incident Number 096-1-A. Begin Log. Time. Research Area. It always sucks ass to get initial retrieval duty. You have no idea what the damn thing is capable of, besides what jacked up information the field techies can scrape up, and you're lucky if they even tell you the whole story. They told us to bag and tag, didn't tell us jack shit about not looking at the damn thing. Could you describe the mission, please? Yeah, sorry. We had two choppers. One with my team and one with backup on Zulu 9B and Doctor. We spotted the target about two clicks north of our patrol path. I'm guessing he wasn't facing our direction, else he would have taken us out then and there. Your report says SCP-096 didn't react to the cold. It was negative degrees Celsius. Actually, it was negative And yes, it was butt naked and didn't so much as shiver. Anyway, we landed, approached the target, and Corporal got ready to bag it. That's when Dr. called. I turned to answer it, and that's what saved me. The target must have turned and my whole squad saw it. That's when SCP-096 entered an agitated emotional state? Yep. Interview now paused for a second before continuing. Sorry. 
got the willies for a second. That's alright. Yeah, well, I never saw its face. My squad did, and they paid for it up the ass. Could you describe it a little more, please? Pauses. Yeah, yeah, it started screaming at us and crying. Not animal roaring, though. Sounded exactly like a person. Really fucking creepy. Pauses again. We started firing when it picked up Corporal and ripped off his leg. God, he was screaming for our help. Fucking A. Anyway, we were blowing chunks out of the target round after round. Didn't do jack shit. I almost lost it when it started him. That's when you ordered the use of a… Papers are heard moving. AT-4 HEDT launcher? An anti-tank gun. Started carrying it ever since SCP got loose. I seen those tear through tanks like tissue paper. Did the same thing to the target. There was significant damage to SCP-096. It didn't even fucking flinch. It kept tearing apart my squad, but with half of his torso gone, he draws a large half circle across his torso. But it was taking damage. If it was, it wasn't showing it. It must have lost all of its organs, all of its blood, but it didn't acknowledge any of it. Its bone structure wasn't hurt at all, though. It kept tearing my squad apart. So no actual structural damage? How many rounds would you say were fired at SCP-096? At the least, a thousand. Our door gunner kept his GAL-19 on it for at least twenty seconds. Twenty fucking seconds. That's six hundred fifty caliber rounds pumped into the thing. Might as well have been spitting at it. This is when Zulu-9B arrived? Yeah, my squad was gone. Zulu-9B managed to get the bag over its head and just sat down. We got into the chopper and got it here. I don't know how I never saw its face. Maybe God or Buddha or whoever thought I should live. The jackass. We have obtained an artist's depiction of SCP-096's face. Would you like to view it? Pauses. You know, after hearing that thing scream, and the screams of my men, I don't think I want to put a face to what I heard. No. Just… no. Alright, I believe we are done here. Thank you, Captain. Chairs are heard moving, and footsteps leave the room. Retired Captain is confirmed to have left interview room 22. Let this be on record that I'm formally requesting SCP-096 be terminated as soon as possible. End log. Document number 096-1 of Experiment 096-1 Experiment 096-1 is headed by Dr. Dan. Purpose is to test SCP-096's abilities while obtaining complete physical description of SCP-096. D-9031 is a 32-year-old convicted felon and former tattoo artist. D-9031 is placed inside Bathysphere 303-A, which is then lowered in the Tonga Trench off the coast of New Zealand. Position is approximately kilometers from SCP-096's temporary containment cell at site. The following was recorded via video surveillance inside Bathysphere 303-A between it and Dr. Dan's control site on the New Zealand mainland. Bathysphere 303-A reaches final depth of 10,800 meters. It stopped. What now? Do you feel fine? No sickness anything? My ears hurt. That should be expected. Now on your left should be a steel container. Open it, and there would be a manila folder holding several photographs. Open it and describe the first photograph, please. D-9031 complies. The camera is located so the photograph cannot be seen. Nothing. It's an empty cell. Thank you. Please set this photograph face down in the receptacle to your right and look at the next photograph. It's the same cell, but there's a foot in it, I think. Describe it, please. Uh, it's pale and bony. Sort of creepy, actually. Place the photograph in the receptacle face down and look at the next one. Okay. Pauses. Oh shit! Describe the photograph. It's, uh, I don't know, some creepy-ass person. Describe the photograph, please. Hell, man, he's pale, has white eyes, and something fucked up is happening with his mouth. What the hell is this thing? At this point, approximately 13.32 Standard Time, Dr. Dan and Experiment Control notified that SCP-096 has breached containment. The fastest path to SCP-096-1 has been cleared of civilians and other image capturing devices, and SCP-096 is now being tracked by satellite via tracking collar. On your right, there should be another steel container. Open it. It's a pad of paper and a pencil. Yes, please draw a sketch of the photograph you saw. SCP-096-1 mumbles an expletive and spends the next 20 minutes drawing a sketch of the photograph. 
At the time of completion, SCP-096 is confirmed to be kilometers away from SCP-096-1. I'm done. Good. Place the drawing in the receptacle on your left and close the door. SCP-096-1 complies and the sketch leads Bathysphere 303-A in a watertight BOMC container. The other photographs are then incinerated in the onboard incinerator. What now? Please stand by. Forty minutes pass. SCP-096 is now confirmed to be at SCP-096-1's position and is diving. Transponder signal ends at 9,339 meters as pressure goes beyond the device's operational limits. The camera shows the bathysphere shaking slightly. From SCP-096-1's reaction, it is assumed SCP-096 is on the hole and is visible through the viewport. Oh fuck, shit shit shit, what the fuck is that? Video and audio feed is cut as whole of Bathysphere 303-A is breached. SCP-096 is recovered by Surface Recovery Team Foxtrot 303-A without incident. Sketch of SCP-096 is also recovered, and a quick test confirms no hostile reaction from SCP-096. Sketch is sent to experiment control on New Zealand while SCP-096 is moved to permanent containment. Incident 096-1-A So, containment has been attained? Yes, Doctor. Let me see the security footage. Begin log. A large steel cube is shown in the middle of a research lab, with it teeming with a dozen or so researchers. In view of the camera is a control booth, displaying readings from the various sensors inside the cube. Fast forward 1 minute 32 seconds. The control booth operator leans forward, alerted to the various readings on the sensors. Approximately five seconds later, a steel wall on the containment cube receives a sizable dent bending outward. The dent becomes larger before breaking. SCP-096 is seen bending the steel away, frantically trying to escape. Emergency plates drop on the cube as the containment breach is sounded. The security tape has SCP-096's face blurred out as per containment protocol. Two security teams enter the room as SCP-096 breaks out of containment. Live rounds and tranquilizer darts are fired to no visible effect. Approximately 90% of researchers and security personnel have directly viewed SCP-096's face, and a code Lima is declared. The room and surrounding areas are sealed and flushed with class nerve agent. Approximately two minutes later, SCP-096 breaches research site and travels kilometers per hour through the outside desert, traveling in log. Echo Romeo Actual was assigned to immediate containment breach. When we realized just how big a breach we were dealing with, we were completely overwhelmed. Funny how even the best and brightest minds in the world can be so unprepared. So you are saying it is your own fault? Absolutely not. This was a new discovery in SCP-096's behavior. We had no way to know, and we are lucky it did not turn into an XK. Begin log. Helm cam footage from ER-A5. Footage from inside a UH-60 shows SCP-096 on the desert floor, moving at considerable speed. This is Echo Romeo Actual. We have visual of the target, unintelligible, at Not and increasing. ER-A1 listens to the radio with orders, identified as coming from Dr. Dan are relayed. SCP-096 can be seen slowly gaining speed. ER-A1 motions off camera. ER-A3 appears, holding a modified XM-500 anti-material rifle. Two shots are fired. The first misses and the second hits SCP-096 in the lower leg. SCP-096 stumbles but recovers. Speed change is insignificant. Unintelligible. Pete, no effect on target. ER-A1 motions to ER-A3 again. ER-A3 fires three more shots. The first two miss and the third hits SCP-096 in the head. SCP-096 falls, skids, and rolls several times, reducing its speed minimally. SCP-096 rolls to its feet and continues unabated. Camera pans up to see eight V-22 Ospreys belonging to Mobile Task Force Tau-1 flying overhead and past the helicopters on the same outbound vector as SCP-096. Camera cuts out. End log. Begin log. Video interview log 096-1-A. Dr. Alexei appears very calm, determined, and answers all questions slowly and deliberately. Where were you exactly at the time of breach? On break, getting a cup of coffee. It was pure luck I wasn't caught in the containment area. Describe your actions directly after the containment breach. 
I sent Echo Romeo Actual after SCP-096 and alerted Dr. Dan to the situation. We then set upon the task of locating SCP-096-1. Once the general direction of SCP-096 was determined, I sent Mobile Task Force Tau-1 ahead to evacuate civilian population centers in SCP-096's path, all according to containment protocol. End log. Begin log. Video interview log 096-1-B. Dr. Daniel sits patiently on the table in front of him with what looks to be a set of modified night vision goggles. For the record, where were you exactly during SCP-096's containment breach? In the mountain range, trying to find more information on SCP-096's origins. It was a quick research expedition, so I left Dr. Alexei in charge of containment. He is competent enough, if a bit eager, and has proved himself in the past. This is all confirmed by the various related paperwork, so don't go thinking… It was just for the record, Doctor. Now, knowing that SCP-096 is immune to all known forms of damage while in an enraged state, why would you order the sniper attack from the emergency response team? Why not? If there was a chance to slow down SCP-096 and give Mobile Task Force Tau one more time, then we had to try it. It put ER-A in no danger, and the choppers were in danger of being outrun anyways. Honestly, ER-A could do little else to help or harm the situation. I see. Now could you explain this? Interviewer motions to the goggles lying on the table. Yes, this is Project Scramble, an eyepiece we designed to ER-A and Mobile Task Force Tau-1, designed by Dr. Alexei and myself specifically for SCP-096. It carries a small microprocessor which constantly analyzes the viewing field for the facial features of SCP-096. Facial recognition software inside instantly identifies them, scrambling the image into an unrecognizable mess before the light reaches the human eye. It's quite ingenious, really. And expensive. Very. Which is why it's such a shame it didn't work. Begin Log Audio transcript between Mobile Task Force Tau-1 and modified EG-3 Sentry AWACS. Call sign Big Brother. Osprey's in the air, moving at awaiting vector. Electronics online, cruising altitude reach, uploading program scrambled to all camera systems. Cameras online, Big Brother is now watching. What outbound vector is the target currently heading? Target is currently westbound, traveling on… shit. Yeah, he's on the I-40. I think he just flipped a semi. Um, outbound vector is… degrees by… Next town on his vector is… I'd say a couple hundred kilometers. Shit. Mobile Task Force, we're suggesting Echo Romeo begin evacuating the I-40. I don't know how many cars the target has wrecked. Hold one. That's a negative, big brother. ER-A is reporting that the target is outrunning their choppers. They can't get ahead of him. Then get them to stop the motorist on the other lane. I don't know how many people have seen this thing's face. End log. The first three elements of Tau-1 succeeded in gathering the townsfolk in the first three towns of that incident. SCP-096-1 was confirmed to not be in any of these when SCP-096 ran through each in turn without stopping. However, a video log in Mobile Task Force Tau shows SCP-096-1 being identified in the town of and the ensuing incident. Show it. Begin log. Helm cam footage from Element 4 of Mobile Task Force Tau-1 in the town of most of the townspeople are gathered in a square, all blindfolded. Helicopters sweep the town. Indistinct orders are heard over loudspeakers from both the helicopters and ground personnel. Mobile Task Force Tau-1 over Talcom radio and loudspeakers. The target is entering proximity zone. All units activate scramble gear and begin crowd control procedures. All civilians are not to move from their spot or remove their blindfolds. If you move or touch your blindfold, you will be shot. I repeat, all civilians are… Orders are drowned out by a loud shriek coming from outside the camera's view. Approximately two kilometers away, SCP-096 is seen to be coming over the crest of the hills. It tries to slow down the descent but trips and tumbles down at high speed, crashing through several houses before regaining its footing almost without delay. Unknown voice over loudspeakers, unintelligible. Civilians are not to move. You will be shot. I re- Unintelligible. Several shots are heard, none of which are directed at SCP-096. SCP-096 stops for one second before running into the crowd of townsfolk, throwing many aside and trampling more. More shots are heard as the crowd begins dispersing, the loudspeakers unintelligible under the vocalizations of SCP-096. 
SCP-096 locates SCP-096-1, a middle-aged man, and the camera views SCP-096 grabbing him before it is hit by a fleeing townsperson and is dislocated from the helmet. End log. Begin log. Video interview log 096-1-C. Major Jack Wilford, current commander of Mobile Task Force Tau-1. I was looking through SCP-096-1's house with my squad. Poor bastard with a semi-pro mountaineer. Took a trip to the… Apparently he took a snapshot of the landscape and just happened to catch SCP-096 in the background. Wilford holds up four fingers for emphasis. Four pixels. Four fucking pixels. I doubt the guy even knew what he saw. He was probably just looking at the picture one day, noticed an off-color patch of snow and went on with his day. How'd you find it? Our scramble gear picked it up right away. The lieutenant got the picture and took it down to the chopper before I even got to see it. By then, the damn monster had taken down Big Brother and had peeled open the former Major Striker. All hell was breaking loose. So the scramble gear was ineffective? Ineffective? The goddamn scramble with pieces of shit that killed the whole damn task force. You know only three people are alive besides me? All because some retarded egghead thought of a state-of-the-art countermeasure to SCP-096's hostile reaction? Those bloody idiots could've just put a bag over the target's head and be done with it, but no. We had to use state-of-the-fucking-art scramble. End log. Begin log. What did that fucker call me? Dr. Dan pushes back from the table and begins standing up. I'll show that goddamn son of a bitch what an egghead is after I bash open his… Interviewee begins shouting and cursing. Two guards enter the room and push Dr. Dan back into the seat. Do we need to administer a sedative, Doctor? Dr. Dan takes a breath and smooths his coat. No, no, I apologize. <sighs> Scramble was really an ingenious idea, however, it was a failure because we did not fully know how SCP-096 worked. You see, as the chip inside Scramble picked up SCP-096's facial features and began scrambling them, there was a split second of uninterrupted light flow to the retina. Computers are fast, but not as fast as light. So there was a split-second image of SCP-096's direct face sent to the brain. It wasn't even consciously received, but apparently it was enough to trigger the hostile reaction on SCP-096. So with this report of the photograph, that's the most disturbing part of this whole incident. You know when the former SCP-096-1 went on his mountain trip? 1990? That's… years of that photo hanging there before he saw SCP-096. Since the brain doesn't need to be aware that it's viewing SCP-096's face to trigger the reaction, there can be ticking time bombs hidden literally anywhere in the world. How many photographs are out there containing SCP-096, just going unnoticed, waiting for a careful eye? As I said before, I want this thing terminated. Now. End log. Just a quick question, Doctor. Um, what exactly were you planning on doing there? Major Jack Wilford with top-notch SBS when we recruited him. I was also a recon medic, sir, and was deployed to Kakakis. Marines beat SBS. No, they don't. Enough, both of you. Moving on. Begin log. Video interview log 096-1-D. Chief Master Sergeant Door Gunner attached to ER-A. I got the bag over its head. Interviewer. Yes, you've told me that. Could you tell me exactly what transpired? It… it was done with all of its… it was sitting there in the highway. Just got done ripping open a minivan. Interviewee is silent. And? I'm… West landed the chopper. I got out and bagged it. I put the bag over its head. It got calm and they took it. So the victims in the minivan were the last to have viewed SCP-096's face? Interviewee is silent. Interviewee remained silent for the remainder of the interview and was released. He was later found in his bunk room, having committed suicide via hanging with a makeshift rope. A half-crushed pacifier was found in his fist. End log. Begin log. Video log 096-1-D. Confiscated tape from news broadcast CNN. The image shows first responders surrounding the remains of a crashed plane over the shoulder of a field reporter. The plane, which seems to be military in origin, has no outward markings designated as part of the United States military. While first responders look for a black box recording, it is thought by police that the plane crashed due to massive cabin breach in both the cockpit and fuselage. The reporter motions to a large hole in the side of the plane, which several firefighters are climbing inside. Paramedics have only found three bodies, which is odd for a plane apparently requiring a crew of around 20 men, 
police have suggested. The reporter is cut off as three super stallions are shown hovering overhead, two of which land begin unloading troops belonging to Mobile Task Force Epsilon. Shut off the camera, shut off the motherfucking end log. Begin log. Dr. Alexei. So are we finished here? Interviewer. One last question, Doctor, or statement as it seems. We find it interesting that there was no break room at research site or coffee. Interviewee remains silent. We think it would be best if you begin talking. Remainder of video interview log 096-1-A redacted. End log. I don't see what that has to do with me. There is no reason to play dumb, Doctor. He's told us everything. Well then, I guess there's no use feigning anything, is there? Audio recording. O5 hearing. O5-1. Upon reviewing your testimony and available footage, and the confession of the late Dr. Alexei, it is the unanimous agreement of the O5 that you are to be terminated, for your part in the gross breach of SCP-096. And I thought you would know the meaning of, for the greater good. Do not try my patience, Doctor. Given the incident's scope and potential, the O5 have approved your request for the termination of SCP-096. Given the lack of personnel with understanding of SCP-096, the termination will be entrusted to you, under heavy guard and the personal supervision of me. Your own termination will be scheduled at a later date. End log. That is horrible, Doctor. How could you knowingly… It worked. There was only a matter of time until that happened in a major population center, and its face spread over the world news. I can kill 096, but I've killed myself in the process.